Now 2027 is a big conversation topic within human design and the closer we get to 2027, the stronger that conversation is going to become, the more important that conversation is going to become. What 2027 symbolizes is a cross change, a global incarnation cross change. Global incarnation crosses are four different gates that hold together a certain kind of energy. And this energy lasts roughly 410 years, but because we're working with different astrological components, we have to account for things called retrogrades. So it's 410 years, give or take a handful of years on either side. Now we are leaving something called the cross of planning. It has been held together by four gates. A cross is always held together by four gates. In this case, we're talking about gates 40, 37, nine, and 16. Now the cross of planning came in in 1615. If you add roughly 410 years, in this case it's 412 because of the retrogrades, in 2027, we would move into the next cross change. The next cross held together by four gates is gonna be 20, 34, 59, and 55. Now there's a big difference energetically between the cross of planning and the cross of the sleeping phoenix. The primary difference between the two is that with the cross of planning, we had gates 40 and 37. Together they made the channel of community Channel of Community belongs to tribal circuitry, and tribal circuitry has a keynote of support. I want you to think about the word support in terms of spousal support, child support. I want you to think about money, material resources that are used to benefit, above all else, the family unit. Now, that has been the kind of conditioning background energy since the 1600s. If you were to look historically from now back to the 1600s, what kinds of things have come about or been created or developed on the planet that are meant to support the family structure? And in particular, what might happen if these go away? Now, when the cross of the sleeping phoenix comes in 20, 34, 59, 55, it's the 20, 34 that makes a channel. Now the 20, 34, the channel of charisma is in individual circuitry and its keynote is self empowerment. Now, when we move from a time that is very supportive to the family and we switch to something that is very empowering to the individual, you're going to start to see things disappear that the individual doesn't particularly care about. Now, in terms of health beyond 2027, I have, the reason I have started the video this way is because I really want to emphasize that a lot of the things that you currently rely on to support you in your health, they belong to the tribal structures that we're going to see continue to break down and disappear, which means that there is going to be a gap, a gap in services, certainly a gap in support, a gap in how you're going to be able to get your needs met. You know, the tribe is about meeting needs. The tribe actually likes things like dependency. It wants to be needed. It's very personal. It has the touch. These are all tribal keynotes. I want you to think about what you rely on right now to keep you healthy. What elements of those tribal keynotes created that thing for you to be able to use to help yourself to find the support that you need. What's going to happen when it's gone? Who can you rely on? What I'm really trying to bring your mind around to, your awareness around to, is that you are going to need to become the thing that you rely on. You know, when we look at support structures, in many ways, they symbolize authority. Is it a doctor? And is this your health authority? Does the doctor work in the hospital? Is that a support structure? What happens if you can't access these things? 
really, what happens if you are the person you rely on? I want to prepare you. This is very much an awareness preparation video. I want to prepare you that post 2027, you are who you have to rely on and you are your authority. Now, where is this authority in you? We are coming to the point in time where human design is going to be able to offer us the most benefit. Human design hasn't really been able to offer, honestly, that much of a benefit from its coming in in 1987 up until 2027. That's only a 40 year window. And what we've hoped to do with those 40 years, and don't get me wrong, they started before I was born. <laughs> but what we've hoped to do from my understanding is bring human design out into the world enough that adults can find it and they can raise their children according to it. Now that does not mean like, you're a generator so you need to do this or this is your determination so this is you need to eat. It's not about bossing other people around and telling them what they need to do. It's not about being somebody else's authority. It's about being your own authority. You know, we've all grown up with these external authority forces and they may have been really helpful in the time that we're in. Maybe, maybe not. But the point is, we're not gonna be able to rely on them forever. And honestly, I wouldn't want to rely on them. I personally do not want to give up my health authority to a doctor. A doctor is just a title. I don't know how they've been trained. I don't know what their experience is. I don't know what their opinion is. And they could be entirely not self. Who knows what they're operating from? The point is to build trust in us. This is where I think that my business has been driving me the entire time, but there's so much preparation involved. There's so much of a health background. There's so much of a human design background. There's so much of me trying to play with this information to see, is this real? Will it work? You know, I'm a third line profile. Ra says, if there's a flaw in human design, the third lines will find it. I'm here to find what doesn't work. But I have to say within human design, it works. I haven't landed on the part that doesn't yet. I'm going four or five years into my experiment here and I'm still more dedicated to this experiment than any other thing I've ever done in my life. Like, don't get me wrong, I have certain responsibilities. Like I have a son, I'm pretty dedicated to him. He's a responsibility. But I didn't enter human design and have a human design baby that I'm responsible for, right? Like. I am my human design, baby. I am my experiment. Can I raise me now according to strategy and authority? And really, can I get my first seven year cycle in before 2027 hits? That's, it hasn't been my goal. It's been something that I've watched. You know, the realization of, oh, 2027. Oh, well, I found design in 2019. I started in 2020. That's a seven year cycle. And then you have to ask yourself, maybe this is exactly what is supposed to be happening for me. Maybe I am, like maybe I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm gonna have my seven year cycle completed, my first one for 2027. And really what I hope I have done with that first cycle is align my form, my vehicle to a way more correct way of life. Now my vehicle is a splenic projector. I'm only the channel of surrender. Gate 44 is my design Pluto. Gate 26 in my ego is my design moon. I am a design splenic projector. Form principle is incredibly important to me because without it, I don't think I would actually be able to recognize and respect what I am. I just did one of the most disgusting splenic things I'm covered in coffee right now. I took a sip of my coffee and this amber mug keeps it warm, which meant it made a bit of a skin on the top. As soon as that hit my tongue, I spit it out, which was not a very sensible idea because I just literally spat my coffee all over my dress, <laughs> all over my socks, all over my phone, and all over my floor. 
And yet, from the mind, my mind is like, Sam, that's grubby. You're gonna have to wash these things. It's a little embarrassing to even talk about this. And yet, from the human design side, entirely correct, taste cognition, spit it out. My mouth is very important to me. I'm just gonna use my dress to wipe up this disaster and get back to recording. If I'm not supposed to swallow, I'm not supposed to swallow, and I'm gonna trust my body's reaction. So 2027 and beyond, how are you gonna be healthy? You will be healthy according to strategy and authority. Those two elements will align you to the correct life, to the correct food, to the correct people, to the correct environment, to the correct view. And when I say correct, I don't mean good or bad from an ethical place or a moral place. That is not at all what I mean. When I say correct, I mean no resistance on the body. Gives you your signature. Works easier. Does not create problems. Does not create resistance. When it's correct, it feels good, feels easy, feels accessible, feels like flow. When it's not correct, it's a lot of resistance compounded with your not self theme. Bitterness, frustration, anger, disappointment. Now when I say strategy and authority, because we always say strategy and authority, we don't, I actually never hear anybody say authority and strategy. It implies that strategy comes first and authority comes second. But not every single authority decision has this precursor of either informing or responding or being invited. I'm not always invited into things, like, as in I'm alone a lot of the time. If I'm alone and there is no other, there is no other for me to worry about inviting me. But just because there's no other currently inviting me, it doesn't mean my spleen isn't constantly communicating with me. So I do want to separate the concepts of strategy and authority a little bit. I don't want you to necessarily see them as a one, two. I want you to see them as a this and this. Two separate components. But you have to nail both of them throughout your experiment in order to get to the signature. There's something in design called the four transformations and four is ultimately acknowledging variable. We've got the brain transformation, the body transformation, the view transformation, and the mind transformation. And they do go a little bit sequentially in that zero to 30 is when you're expected to learn how to feed yourself, which is determination, how to feed the brain in order to unlock cognition, the body's awareness. Now at Saturn return, when you are roughly 30 years, it can happen as young as 28, when Saturn comes back to the place it was when you were born, Saturn return is what turns on your environment. So we have zero to 28 to 30-ish of learning how to feed yourself. And that gives you a level of intelligence. In particular, your cognition is your real body intelligence. When that cognition is on and working and powerful, it's so much easier to recognize what is the right environment for you when it feels good, when it feels correct, and when it feels wrong and you're experiencing resistance. Now, when we say that this information is mostly for the kids, it's not really for us. We're a little bit older when we find it. A lot of the damage has been done. But if you can raise your children according to this information, you've set them up for success in a very, very different way. You know, a lot of the, the world or society is set up to have young adults take on adult responsibility really anytime after the age of, let's say, 18. Can they vote? Can they rent? Can they drive? Can they drink? Like we start to give adult responsibilities sex, you know, let's say if we're gonna go with sex responsibilities, you know, we're looking as young as 14 in some places where, you know, drinking, those same places want you to be like 21. 
personally, if I'm old enough to have sex, I'm old enough to have a glass of wine beforehand, I'm pretty sure. But these are just my own little opinions. The idea with these four transformations is that the first one, the parents help set this up in the child. Ideally, you know, I'm raising my son Maven to honor his hot thirst determination. And through that, he activates his smell cognition. That smell cognition is a way for him to validate the sacral response. Not that smell and sacral are linked, but he has a cognition, a body's awareness, that comes in as something that backs up or validates the response that he's having to something. If he were to smell something that is very off, very disruptive, disturbing to him, I doubt that that's something that he's having a positive sacral response to. It's probably a negative response. Now, if I can raise Maven to feel confident in strategy, authority, if he can feed his brain according to his correct determination, if we can turn on his cognition, then I can feel a lot more comfortable as the parent that by the time he reaches 28, 29, 30 years old, he's going to know himself well enough that he can trust his yes response or his no response for things. And through that, he'll be able to recognize when he's in an environment that is supporting him, helping him, or is he in an environment that is giving him resistance, causing problems for him. Like, I know that Maven is Valley's environment, but I also know that that is not significant until his Saturn return. Now, also, what's interesting is that I'm raising a child somewhat according to design, as in I don't tell him, I ask, I allow him to have responses. Basically, I guide him into possibly understanding himself through human design. It may be correct for him, it may not be correct for him. Again, that is not my decision to make. He has to have a response to it. But I hope, and Maven is also hope motivation, I hope for Maven that I've raised him in a way that he feels way more confident to navigate through his life and he feels like satisfaction is a birthright for him. I don't, I want it to feel so natural and comfortable for him that that's just how you live your life and you don't really have to forfeit or negotiate or compromise outside of that. And that's how my son will be healthy. I care very, very much about not only health beyond 2027, but so much of this is driven by my own desire to be healthy and also my want to raise my son so that he can be himself. The only things that really terrify me in this world, like truly, truly scare the shit out of me, is the idea that I might not be around for very long. I'm quite afraid of death, but I'm not afraid of death from the actual dying perspective. I'm afraid of death because it means I'm going to leave behind my son. It means I will no longer be a support person in my son's life. It's making me emotional. Like, this really gets me. The only way for me to really feel relief about that is to do my best to give Maven the opportunity to grow up as himself, trusting himself, trusting his own mechanics, so that when he can't use me, when he can't depend on me, he can depend on himself. This is for the children. You know, I'm very focused on my child, but this information is still meant to be shared, and that's my cross, my incarnation cross of consciousness. I share, I'm here to share so much information, and I, I hope that you use it. You know, my motivation is innocence. I do this for me. I can't do this trying to lead you anywhere. I can't try to lead you to your health, to your strategy, to your authority, to your signature. It's not my responsibility. And it honestly doesn't really matter to me if you do it. What matters to me is if I do it. I care so much about me and I care so much about being a living example for my son. I do not tell Maven how to do these things or what to do. I let him watch me. I give him the opportunity. I'll see what he does with it. Now, I don't want this video to spread fear. 
Uh, don't get me wrong, if you're a natural fear motivation, if you're a first line profile, your caves environment, if you got some security sense going on, you're going to be naturally more inclined to have the fear. But that's not me doing that. That's, those are your mechanics and that's correct for you. But I'm not doing this in the way of like, 2027, the world's going to end. Ah! Because what I want you to understand is that it's already happening. It's not like we're waiting, 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 and then <laughs> terrible, you know, one moment. And I, I definitely explain this one way more in the video. Um, like the lingering cross of planning. I talk about how long the cross of planning really lasts for beyond 2027. And also when the cross of the sleeping Phoenix is starting. Now, the interesting thing here is it hasn't actually started. The gates haven't changed their sequence, but the cross of planning has been crumbling. It has been disintegrating. It's been dying. You know, when people die, like don't get me wrong, you get hit by a car, like that's kind of like, oh, sudden things. But if you die of old age, you know, if you die a good, old, well-lived life, it's a process. You know, you're slowly shutting down. Right now, the cross of planning is slowly shutting down. And if you don't quite understand what I mean, look at the pandemic. Look at what happened. We had a really interesting thing where we have support systems, let's say medical systems. We have political systems, government systems, religious, sim si religious systems. Look at every system, every figure, every authority figure on the planet that had something to say about the pandemic. And there was also, let's look at strategy. You know, how are we given the opportunity to engage with something? Authority, what do we use to make decisions? Whether or not somebody was going to get the vaccine was a really interesting way to see people have to maybe be aware of the fact that they don't know what the right authority is. They don't know who to trust. Is it this person they voted for? Is it someone they elected? Is it someone older than them? Is it someone with more education than them? Is it someone with more money than them? Better reputation than them? What makes a real authority figure? And when you are subjected to possibly being forced into something, let's say somebody wants to force you to have a vaccine, do you have resistance? Do you want to fight back? Do you want to say no? Do you want to say that's not for me? Do you have the power to do that? That's the big question. If I could eliminate the pandemic, you know, it could have been anything. The question is, do you have the authority to make your own decision? I personally do not care what your opinions are about the pandemic. And I do not care what your opinions are about whether or not anybody other than you should have been vaccinated. You get to make choices for you. Do you do that? Can you handle that power? Does it freak you out? Do you make confident choices that way? Are you totally overwhelmed with that? That's what human design does for people. It gives you back your own power. It says you get to make this choice. And also when you make this choice, you're responsible for the outcome. Human design is very cool in that it gets rid of a lot of victim mentality because it puts the power back in you. It says you make this choice. You be responsible for the outcome. You're not a victim here. That's, I feel like, ooh, I feel fortified hearing that. Like I'm not a victim. What's interesting though is when you feel that level of power, You might not know what to do with it. Which is, again, where you're going to wait for strategy. Wait to be invited. Wait to be asked. Wait to go initiate. Wait a lunar cycle. I got kind of fired up on this one. Probably a bit of a longer video than I meant. Or not. I don't know if I meant. <laughs> 
I think I'm gonna teach a class on this one. But if m months or even years has gone by and you're watching this video, class might be over. I would love to know what you have to say on the topic. You can reach out to me on Instagram, send me a DM at Sam Zagar, or just leave me a comment below. Maybe I'll answer it.